So exactly what is government housing? Um, it, very low income. The government, um, they are, um, you have a certain rate that you put them at, and it's really, really low. Government housing or Section 8. So she can't go to, into what? She didn't, she couldn't, mom couldn't go to the cold. Mom doesn't like cold. So she didn't ever think she was going to get to the snow. Like her dad promised. My name is Jane Cartel and I go to Columbia Elementary and I'm 11 years old. Jane is a special, quiet little girl. I remember her from the dryland clinic. She sat in the front row and she listened intently and just had a sweet spirit about her. When you go down the hill, you feel the adrenaline rush in your, in your blood. You feel like you're flying down the mountain when you catch air. And it's like really awesome because I know some people don't get to, get to experience the way that some people do. We were really tired after the second day and Jane was the last to be picked up. And she, mother had, was late and we were waiting outside. The bus had already pulled out. And I said to Jane, Jane, I said, how was your day skiing? And she said so sweetly, oh, Lori, thank you for taking me skiing. She said, I never thought I'd see real snow. I've seen it on TV, but I'd never thought I'd see real snow. She said, my dad used to promise us that he would take us to the snow and that we would play in it and we'd make snowmen. And from Jane's comments, I just assumed, you know, her father was no longer in the home. So I'm thinking maybe because of divorce. I said, so Jane, you know, your father's no longer with you at home. And she said, no, he died. He died three years ago of cancer. And he said, though, he would always be with us. And then she turned around and she pointed to our drop-off location. And there's a restaurant there. And she said that was his favorite restaurant. When we would go out to eat, he would bring us here. And at that moment, I knew that where we picked these kids up was not a coincidence. This was a special prayer that had been answered for this little girl. It made her realize that even beyond death, her dad was there and that his prayer and promise had been fulfilled from this program. And I don't doubt in my heart that Jane one day will be another instructor, ski instructor. I don't doubt that the skiing will be with her in her whole life because I think it fulfilled something that she needed to do. I'm Laurie Nelson, and I am the co-founder and director of a nonprofit organization called Ski Jammin'. It's an acronym for Ski Institute for Junior American Minority Inner City Neighborhoods. This year, we reached out to over 115 children. 95% of them had never even seen real snow. 87% of them come from households that fall below the federal poverty threshold. 47% of them come from single parent homes and 6% from foster care. The letters and, and remarks that we've gotten back from their teachers, from the police captain in the Southwest District of Fresno have been remarkable. These children have done 180 degree turnarounds. Their grades have improved. They now participate in class. They're not afraid to give up in, to get up and give a presentation in class. What I've learned about skiing with these kids is that it's an individual sport. They don't have the same pressures like a team sport. If they make a mistake, you know, the team sometimes get after you and, and you feel like you failed your team. In skiing, if you fall down, you get yourself back up. That day of skiing, um, after you ran all that, did you appreciate skiing more than you did all the other days? Yeah. Like, but I was like, family, like, I can get some time. The bus about to leave, and I was like a pro. Before they ever got on the hill, we, we went to a park in Fresno, and Cruz was one of the students that turned out. He caught a ride with somebody to get over there because it was across town. And he went through the class, and we had told them that this is in preparation, that we were going to leave and go to on a trip up to the snow in about 30 days. 
one week later, Cruz calls and leaves me a message and says, you know, who he is and he can't wait to go and is it this week. And I heard from Cruz about four times before our program ever started, so I knew he was really excited about starting. I didn't know how much until towards the end of the program. His home is about five miles from where we would have our bus stop to pick up. One day he missed the first stop and he ran the rest of the way, which was an additional five miles. And that day he slept on the bus all the way up and he skied his heart out that day. And he had said to his instructor, he was so happy that he, we had ski jamming because he'd been feeling some pressure to join some neighborhood gangs. And on Saturday, he felt safe. Oh, I like Tom do like try again. If you never know, become good again. So don't give up? Nope. Take up too much of your time, oh, but. Okay. I just like I just think I was gonna do it. Like I thought every when I thought I was gonna ski, I thought I was gonna keep falling and falling. I wasn't like wasn't gonna like it. That's everybody on the first day. <laughs> <laughs> when I went out there, it was pretty easy. I just had to get the hang of it. It was a bit of a struggle, you know. I tried to teach him to fall down just on the grass and get back up, and it took him a while. Um, I know that he would get frustrated with himself. And then when on the first day of snow, it was very difficult because Daniels could barely find a boot that fit. He had been having trouble with his weight and um, I know he got disappointed when he thought that he wasn't going to be able to ski. What's your favorite part about skiing? How fast you're going and it, if you go fast and you jump, it's like you're, 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 it's the closest thing you can get from flying. Like we were ever had a dream to fly, that's the closest thing you can get to fly. Yeah. And I basically told Daniel, don't buckle your boots and I'll, if I have to belt them around there to keep them on your feet, we're going to do this together. Not only did Daniel ski, he was the first one to actually ride a lift by himself with a, an instructor on the first hill. Seeing him after going back and interviewing him and seeing how he feels so much more self-confident. He has lost weight, his hairstyle has changed, his clothes has changed, and I can just tell that he is now proud of who he is and he knows he accomplished a great thing. And I also know that this is one that's gonna take it with him for the rest of his life. And I remember the thing he said to me on the last day, our last ski trip, he came up to me and says, Lord, guess what? And I said, what? He goes, my boot fits. And I know that that was huge for him. Try to take a chance, like, don't be, don't give up. If you fall, get back up, because something is good. When you do this, something good is going to benefit out of it. James became very special to my heart because of his persistence. You think it was cold? Yeah. When you fall. <laughs> <laughs> That's so okay. How did you feel when you learned how to, to stop and turn a little bit? What made you feel then? That was heavy. Like I like to go down the big hills because at first I was scary, scared to go. I just wanted to sit on the turtle, but um, I learned how then. Yeah. As career options, what would you want to do? Um, I'll ski. Yeah, and a basketball, basketball player. James is 16, and we are now going to train him to be an instructor for the children that are coming up through the next seasons. So he'll be able to have his own class when he's 18, and I just cannot wait to see him teach children like we taught him. Do you think you have enough confidence to try? Yeah. Are you going to try? Yeah, I'll try. <laughs> Why did you keep calling me every week? Because I wanted to go. It was fun. Okay. So one last thing. I need you to tell me your name and your age and what school you go to. My name is James Rees and I'm 16 and I go to New Millennium. It's like a dream come true. <laughs>
nothing ever free The street lights on the avenue are red Oh, you could never say Could never be This could never happen, but it did This couldn't ever happen, but it did Streets are full of carnage and the avenues are red Everybody waiting for the care been about a year ago that I had a special dream and in my dream it was myself my husband and we have a friend a racing coach from Italy we we're in this dream and in a, it looked like to be a retail store and while we were in there I was opening boxes of coats and goggles and helmets and glasses and there was a line out the door and my husband and our friend Aaron were fitting skis and during the dream I was thinking wow you know I'm gonna open a ski shop and this is gonna be a great business and then I heard the words you're not selling skis, you're fitting skis. And the boxes you're opening are not for retail, but they're for donation. And then instantly, it was like a movie reel played, and I saw everything that myself, my family, my friends, anybody I could involve was supposed to do. I had a passion for skiing, and I ski well, and I needed to give that back. That's fine It's only something 49 I'll sleep it off Tomorrow If I 